Lights out. Tonight, we issue fair warning to those of you who are foolish enough to believe that old Mother Earth is the only planet in this endless universe of ours inhabited by human creatures. But you'll see what we mean, just as tonight the Martian eyes will see Lights out. Good morning, Professor Lyman. Good evening, Frank. What'll it be? The customary poison. Yes, sir. And what do you hear from the Martians, Professor? <laughs> no, some guys see pink elephants or little lizards. But the Professor here, he's different. He's got Martians. <laughs> well, someday, Franklin, when it's too late, People will appreciate my warnings. Remember, they laughed at Galileo. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I've got work to do, Mr. Lyman, so excuse me, will you? And, uh, don't bother the customers, eh? Let me know if he bothers you, mister. Don't look now. Look at what? You see him? Sure, I saw him. He is one of them. He's been following me all day. Now the trick is to jump the gun on them with absolute convincing proof. Did you see how nonchalantly he walked by just then carrying his drink? He'd have fooled anybody, don't you agree? Oh, no, definitely. I knew that you were sensitive the first minute I saw you. You're a press photographer, aren't you? How'd you know that? I've been following you all morning. You what? Yes, sir. Same again, gents? I first noticed you on the subway. I saw how you were watching everybody, particularly their foreheads, like a cat. Well, speaking of cats, by the way, did you know that they can see them too? Only they pretend that they can't. Of course, I have a theory that before they came to Earth, the cats ruled. Who are they? Well, the Martians, of course. Martians? Well, <laughs> like an Orson Welles. Yes, I suspected from the first moment I saw you that you were aware of them too. Look, I'm a photographer. Faces are my business. I watch everybody. Hmm. Well, I, I could be wrong, of course. I've tried to persuade so many people, and all they do is laugh at me. But Professor Spitzer, that is the astrophysics man. Now, he had an article in last week's time in which he said that assuming that there was life on Mars and assuming that they were way ahead of us and could come to Earth, nobody, nobody would believe the few people who did see them Unless, of course, there was absolute, definite proof. All around, as you say. All around. Him? Shh. They rule the world. They have conquered us, and they're so clever that we don't even know it. Wait. They follow us. They even marry us. Now, you take bathtubs, for instance. Okay, take bathtubs. Nobody in their right mind would say that bathtubs are comfortable for us humans. But for Martians, they're fine. Now look, 
whenever I hear the water running into my bathtub and I know that there's a Martian splashing around in there, I usually pretend that I don't hear a thing. Oh, it's a smart move. Well, they hypnotize us, you know. Oh, you don't say. It accounts for so many, many things. Now, why, why does a criminal confess? Hmm? Isn't that the most illogical thing in the world? And, and, and yet he does it. Nothing makes any sense. See, you're serious about all this, aren't you? And uh, why is my wife so illogical about money? Martians? Hmm. Precisely. Mm -hmm. You know, just last week, I uh, realized suddenly that my bed was too short for me and I wanted to buy uh, a long one. Did I? Oh, no. Why? Because the Martian who generally sleeps there, he persuaded me that I shouldn't spend the money. I shall go through the rest of my life now with my feet sticking out over the edge of that bed. Does that make any sense, does it? Hey, look, you aren't kidding, are you? And take wars. Wars don't make sense from any human viewpoint. Nobody wants them. We go right on having them. Why? Search me, Doc. Why? From the Martian viewpoint, they're, they're valuable. You see, they give us a spurt in technocracy. And the Martians use our developments for their own purposes. You figured this out all by yourself, huh, Doc? All by myself. Okay, Doc, I get the picture. Now, look, why don't you take your drink and get down there and sit all by yourself? And do you know how I tell? No. It's the third eye. Did you say that again? It's the third eye. There's a third eye right here, in the middle of the forehead. It's invisible most of the time. Hey, wait a minute. What? If it's invisible, Doc, how can you see it? This, uh, it's a special prescription for infrared light. My physician gave it to me about a year ago for a most unusual eye condition. That was when I saw them for the first time. And I concluded that the third eye is only visible in infrared light. Now, I want to give this secret to the world, but nobody will believe me unless you... Yeah, sure, Doc. Go on. Well, I must warn the world. And the question is, how far will I get? <laughs> That's a good question. You see, not even the Martians believe me. Oh, if they did, I'd be a dead duck by now, wouldn't I? Now, I had hoped that... No. I suppose that your Martian has hypnotized you just like all the rest. You won't believe me. Did you say my Martian? Please. Now, I may be just a tiny bit drunk, but my logic is absolutely unimpaired. Two and two equals two and two. Either you know about the Martians or you don't. If you do know, why do you give me this my Martian routine? Hmm? I, 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 my Martian knows you have a Martian. I know you have a Martian. The only question is, do you know it? Will you think hard? Will you? No, I don't have one. Why? You're very nervous, aren't you? Yes. You're very nervous, aren't you? Of course you have a Martian. Everybody has one following him around, watching him, giving him... What would I be doing with a Martian? You're out of your... Was it... Uh... Look, I must go. Not just yet, Doc. What? Is anybody watching us? Listen, when you started talking, I figured you were loony as a bedbug. Maybe you are. If this third eye business interests me, sit down. No, I'm Come not. on, sit down. I have a studio on the ground floor of my house where I do some private work. You know, portraits and stuff to pick up an extra buck now and again. I really don't need any portraits. About a month ago, I started fooling around with some infrared film. It's something new, you know, for taking pictures in almost complete darkness. Well, I shot a picture of my studio. When I developed it, there was someone looking in my window. Well, I... I blew it up to see who it was and... Here it is. I figured it was some Halloween gag until you started talking a little while ago. Now, now that we've both seen it, we might be able to convince people. It, 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 it was, it'll be dangerous, though. You see, as long as it was just a question of one drunk old man babbling in a bar, they didn't need to worry about that. But now, the two dogs. Do 
You take this photograph for safekeeping. But to the negative. Well, come to my studio about 8 o'clock tonight. We'll figure out how to proceed. Can you be there? My wife. Well, tell her you have to visit a sick friend. Tell her anything, but be there. Here's the address. Well, I... You better go out the back way. So long, Professor. Ah, uh, he's quite a character, eh? Philip. Uh. You know, I've seen him come here with all kinds of things. But he's the first one I've seen with Martians. Sorrell speaking. Hello, Mr. Sorrell. This is Professor Lyman. Well? Uh, I had a difficult time. My wife is a most suspicious woman, but I managed to sneak out. Good. Where are you? I'm in a drugstore near your corner. Now, you listen to me. Do you remember the one who was snooping around the bar? Yeah. He's been following me ever since... Ever since I left the house, I think I managed to give him the slip, but I'll, I'll stay here a few minutes to make certain. You have the negative? Yes. Oh, good. But we must be careful. We must be careful. When I get there, will you let me in quickly? Right. Good. I'll be over in a minute. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll be waiting. Thank heaven you got here, I would... You. Good evening, Mr. Sorrell. You have an excellent memory for faces. So do I. What do you want? Let's not be naive, Mr. Sorrell. I was extremely interested in your infrared photography this morning. I don't know what you're talking about. After listening to our friend Lyman babble about three-eyed Martians for the past few weeks, it came as quite a surprise to me when you actually produced a photograph corroborating what he said. Naturally, it was most important that I verify the photograph and the technique. You're crazy. You're mistaken, Mr. Sorrell. It's our friend Lyman who's crazy. At least, I hope to prove he is. You will get the photograph for me, please. And the negative. Who are you? Our friend Lyman has been acting most peculiarly lately. His wife has become concerned. She's thinking of having him legally committed to an institution. What's all this got to do with you? I, too, am most anxious that Lyman be committed. I've been following him for some weeks. So, naturally, Mr. Sorrell, Following him, I observed him. So you see, that's my job. I want to make sure that Lyman is committed as insane. So that Mrs. Lyman is free to pursue the kind of life that she chooses to lead. So naturally, when you come along and verify all the things that, have been, that he's been saying, I am most concerned. You're lying. You're one of them. Get the photograph, Mr. Sorrell. And if I refuse? You will not refuse. 
Very well. It's in the dark room. And Mr. Sorrell. No tricks, please. My client is very determined. you thought of everything, including the telephone wires. Here's the negative. It was taken with infrared film using a combination of filters known only to me. I used this camera using ordinary technique, like this. Here. Here. Martians are flesh and blood, and they can be killed. How? Well, I managed to sneak in and surprise him. I borrowed your little paper knife. But this, this is murder. What do you think he'd have done to you if I hadn't killed him? But I'll get the police. No, don't be a fool. Do you think that the police are going to believe a fantastic story about a three-eyed Martian? We aren't ready for them yet. No, we've got to convince the world before we tell them. But the body. Someone may come in here at any moment. You pretend that you're taking... You pretend that you're taking his portrait. You see, I'll be in the base. I can't! Well, you must. Open up! One moment! Wait a minute. Maybe he wasn't a Martian. Why, Maybe of he's... course he's a Martian. I can see his third eye quite plainly. It's staring wide open. Don't, don't you feel it looking oh, at you? Stop talking like that. Hide. You be calm. Police! Oh, uh, Mr. Sorrell? Uh, hello, officer. I'm, uh, I'm terribly sorry to have kept you waiting, but uh, I was doing a portrait. Oh, well, I'm sorry to bother you, sir, but the telephone operator phoned precinct. She said she got a call from your number. It sounded like you needed help. No, no. Everything's perfectly all right, really. Uh, thanks very much for coming anyway. Well, I just wanted to make sure. Mind if I look around? Well, uh... I'm pretty interested in photography. I noticed your rig in here. Yeah, that's a beauty, all right. Uh-huh. Boy, I wish I could afford one like that, but I guess not on my salary, huh? Well, Mr. Sorrell, I see you're busy, so I'll just take off. I'm sorry to have bothered you, sir, but you know all these things are. Oh, uh, watch the birdie. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Sorrell. Good night, officer. I could be certain. If only there was some positive way. Lyman. What? Are you ready yet? In a minute. You bring him down.
There's no third eye. He's a human. An ordinary human. Diamond. Diamond! I'm ready for you. Diamond, we, we've made a mistake. Oh, no. There's no mistake, I assure you, Mr. Sorrell. The graves are ready. Both of them. Both? Both. Come down. Anyway...